Jesus. Um, I would say no doubt lived as a person, but to the extent of what he did, I'm not sure. If he comes walking into where I work, uh, shows me the signs of the, uh, the stigmata and tells me he's a son of uh, God, I might start believing. I don't, don't believe in God, first of all. Um, maybe because I grew up in like an age of science. I have a lot of different thoughts and theories on, on Jesus, and, and, but I, I don't think coming back from the dead is really, really possible. The early Christian movement could never have come into being. They recognized in Jesus something. I just thought the idea of an all-powerful, all-loving creator of the universe was just an absurd idea on the surface of it. It wasn't even worth my time to check out. As far as Jesus was concerned, I thought that if he existed, and I wasn't sure whether or not he ever did, he was probably a, a nice guy, he was probably an excellent teacher, but he certainly wasn't the Messiah, and he certainly wasn't the Son of God. Now my wife was more in spiritual neutral. She was more of an agnostic, whereas I was more antagonistic toward Christians. I just didn't know where all the pieces fit together. I didn't know who Jesus was or how he fit into the picture. Lee was antagonistic towards God. I was simply confused. There really was no room for God in my relationship with Leslie when we were dating and when we got married, but you know what? We were happy. We didn't have any problem with that. When I first started going to church, Lee responded very negatively. He basically told me that this is not what he had signed up for. That when we had gotten married, he had life planned in a way that did not involve church. My biggest fear with Leslie was that she was going to turn into some religious prude or something, and I thought nothing good can possibly come out of this. But even though I had all these negative ideas of things that were going to happen, in the ensuing months I began to see positive changes in her character and in her values and the way she related to me and the children. And it was winsome and it was attractive. And so when she invited me to go to church with her on January the 20th of 1980, I thought, you know what, I'm going to go. Get her out of this cult, you know, that she's gotten involved in. He did go in with his reporter's notebook so he could take notes and try to find the scandal. Well, the pastor gave a talk that day called Basic Christianity, and he just systematically laid out what it is that Christians believe. And I, I was, my mind was blown because I had all these misconceptions, and he really did straighten me out on a lot of things. And I remember walking out that day saying two things. First of all, I was still an atheist. He didn't convince me that day that God exists. But secondly, I realized if this is true, this has huge implications for my life. Lee's approach was very different from mine. Mine was mostly a heart issue. I wanted to know that God was real and the way that was real for me was experientially. And for Lee, it was more about documentation, about being able to have facts that proved it true. Well, I was a journalist, so there was really no problem with me picking up the phone and calling a scholar and saying, hey, I'm Lee Strobel, I'm with the Chicago Tribune, uh, I'd like some background information about the New Testament. And so I, I would do that, and I thought it was going to be so easy to expose the fallacious thinking behind Christianity, but as it turned out, it took me almost two years of my life to investigate these issues. It really was, in a sense, the most exciting story I'd ever pursued as a journalist. I think unfortunately because the documents, the New Testament and specifically, were written so far after Jesus' uh, death uh, that it's really hard to say. 
I don't know myself that it was real, I was not there, but people were there at that time. So the, their account of things that happened back uh, 2,000 years ago has been passed down. As an attorney, I, I rely on evidence. And so, you know, it would be tough to get evidence at this late date. Well, I began my investigation by looking at the gospel accounts. How did I know that the New Testament was telling me the truth when it talked about Jesus? Now, obviously, I didn't accept the New Testament as being the inspired Word of God. I certainly didn't accept it as being inerrant. But what I had to accept it as being, which it undeniably is, is a set of ancient historical documents. And I knew that historians had criteria that they could apply to determine whether or not these documents are trustworthy. So those are the kind of people who I pursued. I went after the heavy hitters. I went after the expert witnesses who could help me sort through these issues. J.P. Moreland, Biola University. Mark Strauss, Bethel Seminary. Greg Blomberg, Denver Seminary. Craig Evans, Acadia Divinity College. 